Why we're here is because today, Bhutan, the Tourism Corporate Council of Bhutan, has decided to celebrate World Tourism Day by showcasing all the different sorts of food that you can get all over Bhutan. Some delicious food. I want to show you that chemical energy is not boring. Chemical energy is tasty. Chemical energy is delicious to eat. Chemical energy is food, or food is chemical energy. And so, if I were to give you a pill labeled chemical energy, it might be a bit terrible. But we can actually, through our cooking, make chemical energy very, very delicious. So here is examples of chemical energy, all food which comes from the Keng region of Bhutan. So when you think of chemical energy, you think of food, because without the energy in the food, our bodies could not survive. We will die. Chemical energy is fun. Chemical energy is delicious. Chemical energy is tasty. And chemical energy is necessary for our bodies to function. The chemical energy in the food allows us to run up mountains. It allows us to go on bicycle rides. It allows us to take part in marathons. It keeps all our bodily functions working. Without the chemical energy that we have in food, we would all die quite quickly. So enjoy all the different foods that you can find across the kingdom of Bhutan. Another form or type of energy is electricity. And this is a really useful form of energy because we can send electrical energy along wires. And here we are at Simtoka looking at the great big transformer station where the electricity which comes from various hydropower stations in Bhutan is all brought for distribution to Timpu and the whole of the valley around. So electrical energy, very, very useful. We'll say a little more in a moment. Hello, well now, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Tsencho, who is the Managing Director of Kunsel, who's just arrived here in the Kunsel office in the new electric car. And Tsencho will tell you a little about why he's chosen an electric car. Uh, nice to see you here in our compound. The electric car probably was uh, brought to Bhutan about a year ago. Uh, after seeing this car, Kunsel actually decided to buy one. The reason being that we do a lot of running around here in Thimpu. Our reporters are always on the road, our marketing people are always on the road. And driving in a bigger car, we felt was firstly not very advisable here now in Thimpu because of the number of cars on the road here. This car actually makes uh, it uh, possible for people to even park in a very small congested area. Secondly, it does not have an engine like the other cars. so. It is fully powered by electricity and as such it does not use any fuel. That means we are actually saving, uh, we are not polluting the environment. I think the biggest uh, plus point for this car is that we are not, uh, we are not polluting the environment. And we at uh, Kinsel, we are very much conscious about our environment. I think uh, our constitution also 
uh, makes a mention of uh, saving the environment. So we as a responsible organization, I think we need to be also very much uh, in tune with our national policies. Uh, I personally drive this car, especially when I go for uh, meetings, whenever this car is available. Often this car is not available during the office hours because, for, because the reporters keep going out. So I, whenever I get an opportunity, I always try to use this car because it firstly is, uh, saves the environment because it has no pollution. Secondly, it also saves my company a lot of money, otherwise, which otherwise we'll be using on uh, you know, putting fuel in our other cars. So I would actually advise people to probably go for such cars so that the environment here in Bhutan can be saved we can save something for our future generations. And I think this is something that we, as Bhutanese, we need to uh, bear in mind. So this is Kunsel's electric car. And as the managing director said, it doesn't use diesel, it doesn't use petrol, it uses electricity to power it. And in here, at the back, we've got batteries. And instead of putting diesel fuel or petrol in, all you have to do is plug it into any PowerPoint, an ordinary domestic PowerPoint. And this puts electrical energy back into the batteries, which can be used to drive the car for about 100 kilometers. So electrical energy is very, very useful. You can use it for heating your water, for washing or for making a cup of tea. You can use it for cooking your rice in a rice cooker. You can use it with electric radiators for heating a room. And of course, most useful of all, you can use it to light an electric light bulb so that you can read and work in hours of darkness. Electrical energy, so useful. And you'll remember one of the big points about electrical energy, you can send it down wires. So the electric car uses batteries, non-polluting, and very, very good for use in a town such as Timpu or Funtsoling or Monga, Wangdifodrang. Very good indeed. Everybody should use one. And this car that I'm sitting on is a very special car. This is the very first one of its sort to come into Bhutan. And this car is special because it works with electricity and with petrol. There's a petrol engine in the front, but there are also batteries and an electric motor. It uses two sorts of energy, chemical energy in the petrol, electrical energy in the batteries. Now, this means it is very, very environmentally friendly. When I'm driving in the town, I can use the electricity. No fumes come out, no exhaust fumes. When I'm going up steep hills or for very long journeys, then I can use the petrol engine. But there's another very good thing about this too. Usually, when I apply the brakes in a car, the wheels get hot. The kinetic energy of the car is turned into heat energy. And it's all wasted. It just goes to heat up the air all around us. Well, with this car, much cleverer because if I want to slow down the kinetic energy of the car turns a generator which recharges the batteries so this means very little wasted energy now this sort of car working with two different sorts of energy this is called a hybrid car and this is the car of the future working with chemical energy and electrical energy, with petrol and with electricity. The hybrid car. Look out for it. Some more will be coming into Bhutan. Yeah, OK. Now, I want to talk a bit about heat energy and try to answer the question, what is heat energy? Well, we're all familiar with things that are hot, we're familiar with things that are cold. We know when we're feeling hot, we like to wash our face in hot water. So what actually is heat energy? 
Well, it's actually quite simple, and I've come here to Timpu Primary School to try and explain. Because heat energy is kinetic energy. But it's not the sort of kinetic energy of a truck moving along the expressway. It's a bit different. Heat energy is the kinetic energy of molecules. You've learned about molecules. All substances are made of molecules. Heat energy is the kinetic energy of molecules. Now, I'm here at Timpu Primary School because molecules behave very much like primary school children. Molecules, just like primary school children, have got lots of energy and they rush around all over the place in a random way. Now, what does random mean? Random means they're running around in all directions, totally uncontrolled, and that's what random movement means. So, in a minute, I'm going to get the primary school children at Timpu Primary School to act molecules. Go! Hotter! Hotter! Stop it! Now you notice the line here. This is just like the surface of, for example, a bucket of water. The molecules of water don't come out. They stay in the bucket of water. But if I heat up the water even more, some of the molecules have got enough energy to escape out. And the water molecules begin to fill the whole of this area. And that is called boiling, when the water turns to steam. Boiling! <laughs> so, heat energy is the kinetic energy of random movement of the molecules in a material. The kinetic energy of random movement. Now, if I make something hotter, what I'm actually doing is making the molecules in the object, I'm making the molecules move more quickly. I'm giving them more random kinetic energy. And if I make them hotter still, they're moving even quicker. And this is what causes something to change from being a solid to a liquid to a gas. When you have a solid, the molecules all stay in the same place, but they jiggle around. Add heat energy, and the molecules start to move around. They don't stay in the same place, they start to move around with random movement. And that's why a liquid will flow. And then if you make them hotter still, they move around quicker. And if you give them enough heat energy, they get enough energy to escape out into the air. And that's what happens when water boils. The molecules have enough random kinetic energy to start rushing around out of the liquid and into the air. And we see the water molecules then all over as steam. If you crash your car into a big rock, all the directed kinetic energy of the molecules in the metal of your car is suddenly, when you impact the rock, it's turned into random movement of the molecules 
and your car gets hot. When you apply the brakes in your car, the brakes get hot. The directed kinetic energy of the molecules is turned into random kinetic energy of the molecules in the brakes, and the brakes get hot and take away energy from your motor car. So remember, molecules are like primary school children. They've got lots of energy and they rush around all over the place. When I heat them up, they rush around more quickly. Heat them up enough and they can escape from the surface, like with boiling water. And that's different from the kinetic energy of throwing a brick or a car moving along. Because when I throw a brick or when a car moves along the road, all the molecules have got kinetic energy in the same direction. But with heat energy, it's random direction. Next, you will see and hear the most powerful nuclear weapon ever detonated in the world. The Emperor Bomb is the Western name for the Russian hydrogen bomb that was codenamed Ivan by its developers. It was the largest, most powerful nuclear weapon ever detonated in the world. Next, the Emperor Bomb and other bombs less powerful that will follow it. Well, that was quite an explosion. That was the explosion of a nuclear bomb where nuclear energy is converted into heat and light and a great deal of sound. Now, nuclear energy is a very, very important form of energy because it is the most powerful form of energy available to us here on Earth. Nuclear energy comes from interactions of the nucleuses of atoms and we all know about atom bombs and hydrogen bombs and you know the Sun is one very 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 big nuclear bomb that's where the heat and the light we get from the Sun comes from from nuclear a continuous nuclear explosion in the Sun so the Sun is one great big nuclear bomb. Now, nuclear energy uncontrolled in an explosion can be very, very, very damaging. On the other hand, nuclear energy controlled can be used in a nuclear power station to generate electricity. Nuclear energy coming from interactions of the nucleuses of atoms a great source of power here on Earth and the source of all the energy which comes to us from the Sun. Just to go back about what we've said in this program, we've talked about energy, 
And we've seen that energy, in a way, is a little bit like money. And we've talked about the types of energy. And we've seen that types of energy are a little bit like the different currencies, the US dollar, the Bhutanese nultrum. And we've talked a little about kinetic energy, which is energy of movement. We've talked a little about gravitational potential energy, gaining gravitational potential energy as we go up in a lift. And we've talked about electrical energy. We've seen it's very useful. We've seen electrical energy in the latest development, an electric car and a hybrid car. And we've talked about chemical energy, the energy you get when two chemicals interact with each other. Radiant energy comes from the sun as electromagnetic waves. We've talked about nuclear energy, this most powerful energy that we get when nucleuses of atoms produce the energy. And that's the most powerful source of energy we know. Controlled, as in a nuclear power station, it's very, very useful. In an uncontrolled explosion, a nuclear explosion, three or four bombs would destroy Bhutan. And last of all, we visited Timpu Primary School to see that heat energy is in fact the random kinetic energy of molecules. And thanks to Timpu Primary School children for behaving like molecules. Heat energy, very common. We all have a very good understanding of heat energy. So energy and the types of energy. Now one really important thing that I'm going to talk about in the next program is how we can turn one sort of energy into another sort of energy, the conversion of energy. And so until then, let's remember the nuclear bomb and give thanks that Bhutan has never ever, and nor I hope will it ever, experience a nuclear explosion. Energy, we need it to live. Everything needs it.